how Jesus' power pulls us through. Trust Jesus. Today, we're going to learn about how Jesus' power gives us hope. We all understand those times when we just feel like something isn't going to happen or, you know, it's just a helpless moment and, and we feel so down. Those are the times when we can trust Jesus to fill us full of hope and we can know that everything will be okay. Trust Jesus. Yesterday, as you may remember, our friend Cam was dealing with some sort of rock slide here at the Rocky Railway, and it was a big problem. I'm wondering if maybe we could find out how things turned out for him. Maybe he's around here somewhere. Oh, Cam. Oh, Cam. Oh, no. I'm s how, how, how are you doing? How was everything with the rock slide? Well, yesterday, my crew and I worked and worked and worked and pushed and shoved and we got all the rocks off the track. Great. But it turns out that the rocks were so heavy that they damaged the track. Oh no. 
fixing that is a whole other problem. So that train's not going anywhere at the moment. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, but it'll, it'll get fixed eventually, right? Unfortunately, eventually is not okay. Do you know what's in that train? Hmm, uh, no. Well, that train is filled with M&Ms. Huh. Wow. Do you know how much people love M&Ms? Oh, no. They really love their M&Ms. So let's just think about this for a minute. If we can't get down this here mountain, those M&Ms won't get delivered. Okay. And if we don't deliver those M&Ms, people will get mad. And if people get mad, they're going to start to yell at us. And if they start to yell at us, then I'm going to get scared because I don't like it when people yell at us. And then I'll get scared and maybe it's better if we just stay up here on this mountain forever and then the angry people won't find me, but then... <sighs> I think I just ran out of steam. I'll say. Whew. Well, Cam, Nobody here is mad at you, right? And, um, and, and the track will get fixed eventually, so you don't have to worry. I don't know. This situation feels pretty hopeless. All I want to do is get on my train and blow my whistle and chug, chug away. Toot, toot. Oh. Cam, don't lose hope. As we're learning this week, Jesus' power gives us hope. Imagine this. Here, stand, stand right here. Look ahead, close your eyes. Imagine you're driving your train. You're behind the wheel. You're driving past meadows. You go around a beautiful bend. And you enter a dark tunnel. And, and it's very dark and you can't see anything. But wait, wait. At the end of the tunnel, there's a light. Can you see it? Can you see the light, Cam? Okay, open your eyes. Wow, I really do see it. That's hope. Like the light at the end of a dark tunnel, when things seem dark or hopeless, Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. So even though you're stuck here for a little while longer because of the broken track, there's still hope. Wow, it really is nice to put your hope in someone who won't let you down or get mad at you about M&Ms. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I see what you guys are doing. Stop eating those M&Ms. Yikes, it seems like your crew is really hungry. I don't think those M&Ms are gonna last much longer. Hey, uh, thank you. I stop eating those M&Ms over there. Okay, bye Cam. <laughs> Good luck. Hopefully everything works out for him. We'll probably see him again later. Well, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day learning about how Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. See you back here later. Bye.
day two of Kids Week at Park Street Church. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bible Adventures. Yay! That's right. We're back here in Bible Adventures. Now, let's review again. Where do our stories come from? Ooh, ooh, I know. Oh, you do? Where do our stories come from, Kyle? They come from the internet. The internet? Yes, because everything on the internet is true. <sighs> Kyle? Yes? Not everything on the internet is true, and that's important to learn early. Oh, okay. Keep that in mind, kids. So no, today's stories are not from the internet. Today's stories are from the Bible. Oh, that's right. Silly me, they're from the Bible. That's right. They're from the Bible because, because why, kids? You know, even though they happened a long time ago, they are still true. So we are going to spend today on a new story, and we're using a different Bible. Maybe you have different copies of the Bible in your house. I have a lot in my house, and today we're going to use this one to read the story and then go through it together. We are reading about Paul's shipwreck. Paul was arrested for telling so many people about Jesus. Soon, he was put on a boat with other prisoners, headed for Rome, where he would have to stand before a judge in court. It's a bad time to sail, he warned the crew. The winter winds are howling. We might have trouble. But who would listen to the prisoner? Paul was right. A vicious storm came, waves like mountains crashed into the ship, and the sailors fought hard to keep it afloat. Help! they cried. Below deck, Paul whispered, God, help us. Then an angel appeared with a message. Paul hurried to tell the crew, Listen! he shouted over the thunder and wind. God promised me that I'll get to Rome. Anyone traveling with me will be safe. Have faith and believe. Paul was sure that God would save them, even when the boat drifted near an island and crack, it broke into pieces. Swim, someone shouted. The crew and the prisoners all jumped overboard and swam safely to shore. And God still wasn't done with Paul he had more work for him to do. Wow, what a story. Yesterday, we heard that God asked Ananias to go visit Saul. Remember? I was playing Ananias and Kyle here was playing Saul. And Saul was not kind to Jesus' friends. He was not. And Ananias was afraid. But Jesus helped Ananias obey, even though it was hard, because Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. God changed Saul's heart, and Saul went from being Jesus' enemy to being Jesus' friend, remember? And people saw how much Saul had changed and started calling him Paul instead. If you could change your name, kids, what would your new name be? Well, I know. Oh, you do? Yes, I'd change my name to Walter. Walter? Why Walter? Well, all the kids call me Wally anyway, so I figure might as well go with it. Fair enough. I named you Kyle, but a lot of the kids have called you Wally. It's true. Yes, yes, it's true. After Paul became a friend of Jesus, he started telling everyone about Jesus' love. But there were still a lot of people who did not like what Paul said. Thumbs down. The Bible tells us that people put Paul in jail. More thumbs down. 
and sent him to see the king for a trial. That meant Paul had to go on a boat to sail to where the king lived. We're going to now have Kyle here as Paul go on a boat. So you can climb on your own boat at home and pretend to go sailing, just like me and Kyle. At first, there were nice, gentle waves hitting the ship. But then a huge storm came. So much water and so much wind everywhere on the boat. It was pretty scary. The storm pushed their ship way out into the ocean, away from where they needed to be going. And it lasted for 14 days. For 14 days, they didn't see the sun or the moon or the stars, just clouds and wind and some rain. Let's count out the days together, kids, along with Kyle. Ooh. Day one, no sun. Nope, no sun. Day two, three, and four, no sun, no moon. Nope, no sun, no moon. The sailors were so afraid. They were really afraid. They thought the ship was going to sink and that they were all going to die. Days five, six, and seven, still no sun, no moon, just more rain. And some clouds too, huh? Well, obviously, if it was raining, well then. Days eight, nine, and 10, still nothing but clouds and rain. Hey, I, I think we should make the ship lighter. You think so? Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh yeah, they started throwing some things overboard to try to make the ship a little lighter. Did that help? Didn't really seem to. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Days 11, 12, 13, 14, they still couldn't see anything but a terrible storm. Yep, still a bad storm. This isn't feeling so great. Everyone on board was so busy trying to keep the boat from sinking that no one ate anything that whole time. Kids, would you be hungry if you hadn't eaten anything that whole time? I would definitely be hungry. They had lost all hope. They didn't think they would ever be safe again. But then an angel came to Paul and told him that Jesus would protect them. Say what now, an angel? Yep, an angel. Jesus' power gave Paul hope, and Paul trusted Jesus, and he shared that hope with the other men on the ship. He told them that Jesus had sent an angel who had promised him everyone would be okay. Really? Everyone's going to be okay? You betcha. Everyone's going to be okay. The ship was going to sink. Wait a minute. Yes? You said everyone was going to be okay. I did say that, but the ship is still going to sink. Everyone's going to make it to shore. Oh, okay. Paul told the sailors that they should eat something so that they'd have the strength they needed. And so, Paul thanked Jesus for some bread. Thank you, Jesus. And he ate some. He also gave some to the other men. Here you go, men. And they all ate some and felt better because Jesus' power gave them hope. Trust Jesus. The next morning... <gasps> what? What is it? Look. <gasps> they saw land. The boat couldn't get there, 
So the sailors had to swim to shore. Good thing I like to swim. Good thing indeed. We can all swim to shore. Kids, help me at home swim. Excellent. When they got to shore, they counted to make sure everyone was there. Yep, we're all here. We are all here. Everyone made it safely, just like Jesus had promised. You know, being in that storm must have been pretty scary for the men on that trip. Yes, indeed. But Paul knew someone who's more powerful than any storm. Jesus. And Jesus' power gave him hope. Trust Jesus. Now, kids, sometimes, sometimes, scary or sad things happen to us, too. Can you think of a time where something like that happened to you? Oh, oh, I can. Can you, Kyle? Why don't you tell the kids about it? Well, one time I was with Miss Leslie and, and I got lost and I was really, I was really kind of scared. Um, I, I was in a safe place, so I found another grown-up to, to help me wait. And then I just stayed with that grown-up and Miss Leslie came back to find me. But it was really scary. That was a scary time, Kyle. I was also scared that time that you were lost. So both of us were scared that day. But whenever we feel scared or sad, we can rely on Jesus' power because Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. That's it for today, kids. We'll be back tomorrow with yet another Bible lesson. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Welcome back to Construction Junction. Today, we're talking about how Jesus' power gives us hope. Having hope is like having a light when you're walking through a dark spot. So today, we're going to make a lantern. Today, you're going to want to take out of your box a bowl that should have two holes in it, a cup that should have two holes in it, this little light, two pieces of Velcro that are stuck to each other, a pipe cleaner, and some stickers or a stamper if you want to decorate your um, project at the end. To start off with, we're going to take the pipe cleaner and we're going to stick it through the bottom of the bowl. So you're going to turn the bowl upside down and then stick the pipe cleaner through one of the holes. You're going to want to pull that pipe cleaner through just enough so that you can then push it through the bottom of the cup in one of those holes. So you can kind of rest the bowl on top of the cup and the pipe cleaner is now going through both the cup and the bowl. Then you're going to want to reach into the middle of the cup and you're going to want to sort of curl the pipe cleaner over and push it back through the other hole in the cup and the other hole in the bowl. Now it might come apart as you're doing that. That's okay if you want to take it just one step at a time to push it through the cup and then push it through the hole in the bowl. That's kind of tricky to do to get it all lined up. But when you're done, you'll have the pipe cleaner through both holes in the cup, both holes in the bowl, and you can put it upside down like that. Then you're going to want to take your pipe cleaner and make it into a handle by sort of intertwining and twisting the pipe cleaner closed. So now we have a handle that we can hold our lantern with when we're done. Next, find the two little pieces of Velcro and you're going to want to take the back off one side and stick it to the bottom of your light. Now, don't put it over to the on-off switch yet because you're going to want to use that on-off switch. But you're going to want to stick it to the bottom of your light. Then let's turn the light on so that we can test out our lantern. And then you're going to want to take the backing off the other side of the Velcro. So now this is pretty sticky. You're going to turn your lantern upside down and place your light in the bottom of the cup. Make sure it really sticks down. This is the step where if you want to go ahead and decorate, you can use markers or a stamper or stickers and decorate your light all over so that you can, it helps you to remember that Jesus' power gives us hope. So, when you are walking along, you now have a lantern that sheds a little bit of light and reminds you of God. When you want to turn the light off to save the battery, you flip it upside down, take the light back out, Turn it off, and then just to keep it safe so that you don't lose it, you can stick it right back in there while it's off too. There you go. My name's Annalise, and I'm 11 years old. Annalise is a singer and accordion player. I started playing the accordion at the age of eight years old. She plays a style of traditional Mexican music called Norteño. I love making music because I feel happy when I make music. I feel like I'm like more closer to God because I sing for him and I play for him. When she's not playing music, Annalise loves playing basketball with her brothers and taking care of all the animals on the ranch in Arizona where she lives. On our ranch we have horses, pigs, chickens, and goats. My horse's name is Frosty. He's a really nice horse. 
Sometimes he's really sleepy. He doesn't like to walk. I don't think he sleeps in the night or something, but he's really tired. Annalise didn't know when she started playing music years ago that it would end up being so helpful and bringing hope to her and her grandmother when they went through a hard time. So my grandma was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. As her grandma fought cancer, Annalise and her accordion constantly kept her grandma's spirits up and helped her to keep fighting. Uh, when I prayed my accordion to my grandma, I would be happy because I would see her happy. She would smile, be like really happy, and my grandpa as well, he would be happy too. I usually play um, one of her favorite songs, which is Let's Praise the Lord, and she loved that song. Annalise sings that song for us. I'm gonna use my hands to praise the Lord. I'm gonna use my hands to praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. He is wonderful, marvelous. Lord of lords, kings of kings. Annalise and her grandma held on to hope in Jesus, even though times were hard. What brought me hope was that I would always see her pray. Like in my like opinion, I would be sad when I would see her like drink all those medicines that she would have to drink. But I knew she had hope that God would make a miracle in her. After lots of praying and trusting in Jesus' power, Annalise's grandmother got better. God healed her from cancer. Jesus' power gives us hope means to me like Jesus has love for us. Jesus has the power for us to have hope in him. In the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verse 24, it says, So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. God's always with you. God loves you. God's here for you. God loves everyone equally. He would love you too. Annalise learned that Jesus' power gives us hope.
hope you guys had fun today learning about how Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. We'll see you back here tomorrow for some more fun. Bye, everybody.